Packing Supplies, located in Kelowna, British Columbia. Today we're going to go through the Mother Sucker Hand Dredge and what you should receive in your package when you receive it and how it all goes together. So let's get started by reviewing the components that we have laid out on the table. Okay, as you can see we have everything laid out on the table and uh, this is basically all the parts that come with your, your unit. We'll start off with the main body and it's just over 30 inches long and it has a 2 inch re uh, receiver at the end of it. You'll have your prospector head it has the valves. Uh, there's an intake valve and a discharge valve. It has a retainer at the end for your inch and a quarter suction tip and a 2 inch o-ring. Your inner rod consists of a T-handle at the top. It's got a vented cap and a leather seal at the bottom. There should be two suction tips. One is for the production for the or prospector mode and the other is 22 inches and is it, it's a half inch and that's for your sniper mode. Also comes with a bit of a tool, uh, not tool kit, a parts kit and inside that parts kit you're going to find an inner rod extension, your two inch o-ring, Two retaining screws, two lock nuts, inch and a half, and a small package of uh, silicone grease. You'll also find six feet of flex hose. It's reinforced, it's lined, yet it's lightweight. It has hose clamps on the ends, and it has an a inch and a half hose bib. And where that goes, we'll discuss in a minute. So that's basically it. Uh, there's not a lot of parts and it's relatively easy to put together. So let's get started. First thing we're going to do is turn it into the uh, sniper mode. And, uh, and the reason we're doing this is because it's the easiest and simplest. And um, so basically you just have your housing. You have your 22 inch half inch sniper, sniper tip and it has a separation also in the nozzle and the reason for that is that it stops the bigger rocks from jamming up. Now you, you can get a couple of rocks in there and just use a screwdriver to flick them out. Don't start bashing it on rocks or anything else to remove it. And uh, definitely don't use it as a crowbar. This is not for, meant for splitting rocks. It's not meant for pulling up big boulders or moving big boulders out of the way. It's meant strictly for sucking up your gravel. Okay. There's other tools for moving your boulders, and this isn't it. <clears throat> it also comes with the, the inner rod, and the seal will actually be attached to it when you when you unpack it. But it'll be loose. Now, what we need to do first of all is you take the thread and you put on some silicone grease to make sure that you have lubrication on there. And I suggest that you take a pair, a cup, two pairs of water pump pliers. And um, because what happens is that even though we grease up these PVC fittings, uh, PVC to PVC tends to bind and gets to the point you just can't take it off with your bare hands. And it should be snug because what happens is that every time you pull on it or push on it, this could actually unscrew. So you want to make sure it's snug so that it doesn't unscrew itself. And uh, normally it's, it's to the point where it's hand tight, you can usually get it off. But if you can't, if you get too aggressive, then that's where the water pump pliers come in handy. Okay? And um, the other thing is you have to soak the seal for a minimum of 30 minutes, especially when you first get it. And the reason for that is there's natural oils in the leather. And we need this leather to swell up so that it completely fills the inside chamber of the main barrel. Okay? And to do that, it has to be very saturated with water. And once that ha happens, it creates absolutely phenomenal seal and it will, it will suck a tremendous amount of volume up. Um, <clears throat> as you can see there on, on this 22 inch, there's actually about four and a half inches of stem on here, plus there's a cup inside. And what happens is the material will come out. As you suck the material up, it comes out and it spills over and all the heavy stuff, because it's on an angle, the heavy stuff will fall to the side. You just give it a couple of shakes like that, push the water out, all the light stuff flies out, all the heavy stuff stays in the bottom. 
Okay. So you can actually pull on this several times before you actually have to clean it out. But getting back to it, so we insert, once we have our silicone, we put our seal on and everything else, have it soaked, carefully put it inside the barrel. And you notice that the, this, this end here is actually chamfered, so that helps prevent any damage to the seal when you put it in, because it is fairly soft. It's amazing how much suction you get out of it, considering how soft it is. And then, all this receiver does, or all this tip does, it goes right into the receiver just like that. Okay? And there you have it. You can snug it, it doesn't have to be too bad, but it's, it creates a really nice seal. And now you can get into those really tight spots, into the potholes, in areas that you just can't get with your hands or, or shovel or anything else. Okay? And to get this out, you, just, you, can, you can either pull it out this way, but I recommend you leave it there. And the reason being, because every time you pull it in and out, it gets abrasive in here. And then all that abrasive will do nothing but wear down this receiver. So if you want to do it, you just give it a couple of shakes like that, and you just pop the top off, put it in the water, put your hand over the end, put it in the water, just let some water flow into it, and then just shake it side to side like that over your gold pan, and tilt it upwards like that, and just let the stuff drop into your gold pan or bucket. And you just do that a couple of times, and it's cleaned out. Just carry on, put it back together quickly, and continue on. Later on, once you're ready to, to finish using it, once you've finished using it, then you can pull a tip off and then you can rinse out whatever is in there. Okay? And make sure before you put that tip in, you clean that ring, you clean the inside. You, you make sure you, you give it a wipe, make sure that all the sand's out of it because, like I say, that sand wears on here and it's going to wear it. Okay? So next we're going we're gonna to make it into the prospector mode. Okay, so now you've seen how the sniper unit works, how it goes together. Um, just as a footnote here, you can use, like we do have an optional three quarter inch sniper tip. And uh, some people like to have the ability to get a little more, more material with each draw. The only thing is it doesn't reach as deep, it is a little bigger so a little tighter into, into you know, some of those smaller cracks. But, you know, people like to use it. and. So we just have it available if you need it. Okay. So what we're going to do now is we're going to convert this back to a, the prospector mode. And first of all, I'm going to take this off, put it off to one side. Just remember, you got to look after that tip because if you've used it and it's wet, then it's going to be soft, and you need to take care of it. So just wiggle this a little bit. You don't have to be aggressive with it. Just kind of wiggle it up, and it pops right out. And just what I suggest is take a rag, clean this out, make sure there's no sand in there or any grit that's going to cause any wear. Okay? Same with the outside of this housing. So now we've got our, our main body again. And the first thing we're going to do is we're going to attach the prospector head. So we'll take our 2 inch O ring, and this should already have some silicone on it, it should be in a little baggy. Just make sure, if it doesn't, just put a little thin film on there and um, stretch it onto the stub, just like that, okay? And then you find the label for the mother sucker and just off to the right you should see a hole. And if you point the discharge, not, uh, the, the discharge valve to the left, which it should be anyway, and you'll see the hole, the corresponding hole in the stub, line those two up and secure it up against the, the O-ring. Put in your retaining screws. Now these don't have to be like really tight or anything. All they, all they do is, is prevent the, the, uh, the prospect head from working its way out because there are a lot of stresses that are involved and, um, and it just needs a little extra help in, in staying put. It doesn't have to go in for it, just snug enough that it's not going to back out. So, there you go. Now, when you're using this, I like to make sure the rule of thumb is have the label pointing top dead center. And as you can see, that means this discharge valve is pointing downwards. The reason for that is the material will come in here and it will fall. Gravity will just bring it right down into this area anyway. Okay? And it will 
eventually fall into the hose once the pressure is relieved at the top. So as you make your pull, the material comes into the barrel and will slide back down and it'll go into this, this area here. And, um, and then when you push down, this bottom valve closes, the side one opens up and it drives the material into the hose and then off into the bucket. So what I like to do is make sure, now this hose, this is your inch and a quarter uh, prospector tip. As you can see, there's a separation in it. This is to protect, uh, prevent big rocks from actually getting jammed in here and plugging up your system, which is not a good thing, and we'll get to that in a few minutes. Make sure that bevel, I like to line up the, the top of the bevel with the letters on mother sucker, okay? So that keeps, that keeps everything in line. So you know that if the mother sucker's on top, the very flat part of this bevel is down into the gravel. Okay, it's not upside down or sideways or whatever. And, um, and then gravity can help you with the material. Now you take your rod, and very carefully, and that's why I like to use a waterfront pump pliers, especially if this is wet, wet and soft, is you remove your seal, and make sure your threads are lubricated with the silicone grease again, the, the male and the female. You attach your rod extender. Again, we use the rod extension simply because there's a, as you can see, there's about four and a half inches of stem on this that, that protrudes inside the barrel, okay? And if this was on, then this, the, end of the, the seal would hit on the end of there, okay? But since we don't use it, we can put an extension on there to actually increase the amount of draw that we have in the barrel. So you actually get more, more volume of water and material into the barrel and then into your recovery system. So we'll put the extension on there. Make sure it's snug so that it doesn't rotate when it's inside, okay? Because there's a lot of pressure and this can rotate and unscrew itself. So you wanna make sure it doesn't do that. And the same with the seal. So put that on. And make sure it's snug enough that it's not going to rotate on you. And that's why I say take some water pump pliers because PVC to PVC tends to bind fairly snugly. And but that's better. It's, it's you're better off having it snug and not rotating it than actually coming off in the middle of an upstroke or whatever. And then you got to get your seal out and disconnect the whole thing and reconnect it again. So that fits back into the barrel, nice and easy. Just tap the tap the, the cap so it's on snug. And now we need to attach our hose. So we take our six foot hose and we have a steel clamp on it. We take our hose and we put it on the discharge. Okay. And then we just secure it on there nice and snug. You want it fairly snug because there's a lot of pressures that are developed in there and it, it's uh, you know, you just don't want to end up blowing your hose off in the middle of a downstroke and then all your material gets chucked right back into the, into the river again. So you make sure that it's nice and snug so that it's on there and it's on there tight. Okay? And now, for the optional receiver sleeve. Now we de designed this bucket sleeve so that you wouldn't have to continuously disconnect and reconnect the bucket. I mean, a lot of those units that are out there, the different ones, they always seem to have the buckets, the receiving bucket, attached to the hose. Which means when the bucket fills up, you have to empty it if you want to continue on. Which means you either have to disconnect and take your bucket over somewhere, dump it into another bucket or a wheelbarrow or whatever, Bring it back to the water where you're, you're working, sink it back down again, put the lid back on, and um, reconnect and then resume. With what we had designed is that we use the bucket sleeve, we attach the hose to here. The bucket sleeve simply fits inside the bucket. Okay? So that when you fill this bucket up, you don't have to take it apart, you just pull the sleeve off. Take this bucket, move it to another area, get an empty bucket, put it in there, fill it full of water, put the sleeve back in, put a 10 pound rock on top because there's a little bit of buoyancy with these, these poly buckets anyway, and uh, you're ready to go again.
and you just keep doing that bucket after bucket after bucket and um, and anyway just to uh, the reason that we we have this receiver sleeve as an option is because it's really really easy to make but it's expensive to ship and um, poly buckets are pretty much anywhere you can get five gallon or in Canada 20 liter buckets and uh, and all you do is you just knock off the bottom you put three holes in the top and you put a two inch hole here or an inch and a half hole here for the hose bib and make sure the lid's nice and secure and you just leave it like that and that's it the hose attaches to the front like this you have your you have your lock your first lock ring goes in here your lock nut make sure it's nice and snug the points are always pointing inward towards any of these lock rings, they have points on them. You want them to point and bite against the wall of whatever they're going into. So on the outside, they would point inwards. And then you take your other lock ring, and the points would point outwards. But always, like I say, it would go good rule of thumb as it's up against the wall. Okay? Because you want those points to bite in so they don't back off. So you secure this in here. use a screwdriver and just give it a couple little extra pushes there just to make sure those points bite in. And there you have it. There you have your unit. Prospect. And um, just leave it in the bucket and away you go. It's easy. It's fast. You can convert it. You know, you want to convert it back to sniper. You just undo these two bolts like that, pop your sleeve, pop your, your head unit off, take that out, take your extension off, take your seal off, seal back on the shaft, on the, on the inner rod, pop it back into the housing. Make sure this is clean. Make sure there's no grit or sand in here. Pop your 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 half inch unit back on there again, and you're set to go in sniper. See how fast that was? And um, and that's the mother sucker dredge. And uh, we're just going to go through some safety concerns in a sec here, and because there's some things you really really need to understand about this unit. And uh, It'll last you a long time, providing you take care of it. And care is probably the utmost of importance. Because when you're out there in the field, you don't have a shop, you don't have drills, you don't have, you know, you have to be able to replace your components. You need spare components. And, you know, if you don't have that stuff, you're, you're sunk. You're back to just using a shovel, which is totally inefficient. This is far superior than a shovel. And if you read our website, we can explain exactly. Okay, you've seen a couple of things or, uh, how to take this from prospector to sniper mode and back again, and how to put it together when you get it. And uh, just want to reiterate a couple of things is that don't use it as a crowbar. I'm going to say I can't say that enough because. You will break this off at the threads, and when that happens, you've got to replace the valve, or we'll replace it, or whatever. But you'll have to get a valve from us, and uh, because we modify them specifically for this unit, and um, and it's not that difficult. But you may also have to get a receiver for the tip as well. And they're not very expensive, but the thing is, is that it's a pain because you have to change it. Okay, and. Um, We'll go through that maybe in another video on how to change the valves. The uh, sniper, like I mentioned, we do have another tip available. It's a three quarter inch. And uh, if you want to order one, and um, if you wish to have a longer hose, like six feet is generally the longest that we, we provide. 
although we can extend it, I don't recommend any more than 8 feet, simply because you put too much back pressure on, on the nozzle. If you get a rock stuck in here in the end of these nozzles, and what's going to happen, like sometimes you'll get two rocks in there, it can't be helped, there's absolutely no way you can avoid it. You'll feel a resistance as you're pulling up. You feel that resistance, stop. What I like to do is I'll put a classifier on top of a bucket, I'll put the tip in the bucket, I'll reach up, and I'll little, maybe you can use your thumb to flick it out, or a screwdriver, or whatever, you just flick it out, and the material will drop into the classifier and into the recovery bucket, and you can, you know, just save it for later. Um, if you try and overpower that, you will blow the valve seals. That's all there is to it. Because there's so much suction that's created by this, this leather seal, the, uh, the, the valves that are inside, the, inside here will absolutely you just pull them right out. Okay? And the same goes as when you're pushing and you, all of a sudden you feel resistance. There's a possibility that you may have a, a long rock has snuck in through here and got crossed up in the, in the discharge area. And it's, it's somehow it's working against the seal. Then you have to remove the pipe and then you just drop it down. Usually that rock will fall out. Or you can just pull it off here and you just shake it out. It takes two seconds just to take the, the head off, dump it out, and then put it back together again. And, um, but either way, when you start feeling resistance up here, then you have to make an adjustment. And um, don't jam it down deep into the gravel. All you need to do is skim the surface. This thing will just pull that material right up. It just pulls the grout up right up from between those rocks and right into the, right into the machine. And you'll find that when you scoop the rocks out later, you'll find that there won't be any, rock, any gravel in there. All you'll have is rocks. And you just toss those aside. When you start seeing, seeing gravel again, put your mother sucker back down in the hole and clean up the material that's there. The active shoveling drives gold deeper. This pulls the gold out. Okay? It doesn't cause the vibration that shoveling does. You hit a, hit a boulder, as soon as you hit a boulder, causes stratification, gold sinks. Gold falls in between cracks. This pulls the material out from the cracks. And that's why it's far superior to shoveling. And um, I know that once you have one of these things, you'll use it time and time again. I know I do. I use mine all the time. And um, just so you know, we do keep all replacement parts. All you have to do, what I suggest you do, is that when you first order your machine, make sure you include an extra valve and uh, an extra intake valve, an extra discharge valve, and an extra seal. Because those are the things that are, are, are usable, okay? They're like tires on your car. They will wear. Okay? And that's about it. Hope you enjoyed it, and enjoy your machine. I'm sure you'll just absolutely love it, just like I